have you ever come across a situation, a decision, and you began to do a cost-benefit analysis of whether this would be a good idea for me and everyone else before I take the call? If so, you have applied the ideas of utilitarianism, an idea that focuses on maximizing pleasure and minimizing pain. In this presentation, we will look into key philosophers who have dealt up the main schools of thought for utilitarianism and look into different examples and evaluate the ideas of utilitarianism. So to begin, the theory of morality, it's basically a theory of morality that bases its principles on the idea that we should support actions that generate and create more happiness for society as a whole. Actions of utilitarianism come through socioeconomic decisions that seek to generate happiness for as many people as possible. It should be noted that utilitarianism does not take into account things such as feelings, emotions, culture, or even justice for the matter. The main focus is on social happiness, and that's the priority. Because we can account for cost and value in utilitarianism, I think it's the most appropriate uh, framework for all business contexts, where in this case, the benefits would be happiness and pleasure from the act, and the cost would be the agony that could be caused by the action itself. Now, let us seek to understand the philosophers who have developed two key categories of utilitarianism. To begin, let's start with Bentham. So according to Bentham, the most moral acts are those that maximize pleasure and minimize pain. This has sometimes been called as the utilitarian calculus, which looks at the intensity of the happiness as well, the duration, and how continuous it can be. And that would be moral if it brings the greatest amount of pleasure and the least amount of pain for everybody. Bentham said, an act is right if it delivers more pleasure than pain and wrong if it brings about more pain than pleasure. So by adding up the amount of pleasure and pain for each possible act, we should be able to choose which is the good thing to do. So in his very simple case, happiness is equal to pleasure minus pain. Now let's look at Mr. John Stuart Mill. So he is slightly different from Bentham in this case where he said that the greatest happiness principle holds that actions are right in proportion as they tend to promote happiness wrong as they tend to pr produce the reverse of happiness. By happiness is intended pleasure and the absence of pain. By unhappiness, pain and the privation of pleasure. Some kinds of pleasure are more desirable and more valuable than others, and it would be absurd to assume that humans are just simply going to enjoy pleasure without looking at the quality of it as well. So Bentham looked at the quantity of happiness, while Stewart looked at quantity and quality in this case. So according to Mill, the quality of pleasure employs the use of the higher faculties because he believes that humans are going to basically enjoy higher levels of happiness, unlike animals who are just simply going to be satisfied with basic pleasures. So Mill says that the quality of pleasure that satisfies a human is different from that which satisfies an animal. Just like as I explained, people are more capable of more than animals, and so it takes more to make a human happy. Therefore, a person will always choose higher quality human pleasures and reject merely animal pleasure. So this is the two main distinctions between these two great philosophers. So now that we have understand the, understood the ideas that basically would create the two main ideas of utilitarianism. So let's begin. Let's look at uh, Bentham's act utilitarianism first. So within this line of thinking, which is known as act utilitarianism, we are required to promote these acts, which will result in the greatest good for the greatest amount of people. So his idea was that we look at the individual alone and the act that they're conducting. And so in this case, we're looking at the quantitative approach of the action and we do a hedonic, a hedonistic calculation of how much pleasure and how much pain it eliminates basically. And this will be the ideas of act utilitarianism. On the other hand, we have rule utilitarianism, which was developed by John Stuart Mill. Um, his idea was that the greatest happiness for the greatest number comes from how we can make it as universal, universal as possible, which means that for any rule to work uh, effectively, everybody must follow this rule, and it must be based on good moral principles. And so in this case, it's based on qualitative approach or higher and lower levels of pleasures. So to create a very accurate uh, distinction, um, according to act utilitarianism, the principle is basically applied directly to a particular action in a particular circumstance. According to rule utilitarianism, the principle is applied to a selection of a set of rules which are in turn used to determine what to do in particular situations instead. So now that we have touched upon the distinctions, let's look at both how the, these ideas are applied. 
So let's begin with rule utilitarianism. I'm sure all of you have basically taken flights before, and that is a very clear example of how rule utilitarianism can be applied in a business framework. So what is the main rule of all air flights? First, you pay for the ticket and you sit on your assigned seat. But that goes deeper if you look at it from a rule utilitarianistic perspective. In this case, the first class members pay the most uh, for the for as many amenities as possible. Business pay lesser, but still get some amenities. And the economy class flights, uh, passengers tend to get the least amount of amenities, but they also get the benefit of lower costs. So in this case, the idea goes that if everybody follows these principles, everybody would be happy where economy class flight passengers get the idea, the advantage of low cost travel across long distances. The first class passengers get the most amenities, but pay the most. And that way, the flight is affordable for the economy, and the first class basically fund the flights for the airline companies itself, as they make the most amount of money from there. However, we should also look at it from a, another perspective for real, rule utilitarianism. The idea of rule utilitarianism, once again, I would like to remind you, is that the rules must be created and agreed upon by everybody in order to generate as much happiness as possible, right? But what happens if we break those rules, or in a sense, like what Ford did, abuse those rules. So I would like to raise the example of Ford Pinto. So Ford developed this car uh, that, because at that, pro at that point of time, the only way Ford would compete was by making cars as cheap as possible. And in this case, they basically created a car that had severe, severe design flaws. And they knew this, that it, the car was fatal and would potentially kill people. But they said, we have created the car in a to all the regulations that has been provided in the American market. So they had not broken any rule, but they ended up actually place, placing a price on human life. In this case, they said that if we release this car, we would only suffer a cost of $45 million worth of lives. In, the, in reality, it ended up that this car would become a disaster and cost $100 million US dollars in human life and fatal accidents. And Ford basically learned this lesson. But we should say that we should see how utilitarianism can end up, um, how do I say, abusing justice and placing a, a life, a value on life, which is in a way very impossible to do because how do we place, a, how do we quantify life? How do we quantify emotion in a sense? And that's the dark side of utilitarianism as well. Now let's look at act utilitarianism. So let's look at, at it from a business perspective, right? As I said before, utilitarianism is the most appropriate uh, format, in my opinion, because first, let's say, imagine that you're a manager and your job is to make your stakeholders happy. All organizations must improve their performance while also understanding the importance of their reputation. Both factors may be adversely connected as well as illustrated in this example. So let's raise the example of Netflix. So Netflix calculated the amount of joy and agony that the closure of the animation department would create. So in this situation, the joy would be more revenue generated but the pain would be the layoff of Netflix animators, which then applying act utilitarianism, the joy of more revenues far outweighs the pain from job losses because it satisfies a larger group of people, shareholders, customers, and the other employees in other departments as well for the cost of the pain from the animation department employees. So that's how act utilitarianism can be applied as well. Next, let's look at the, let's look at the advantages and disadvantages. So as explained before, the advantages of utilitarianism is it creates a focus on happiness for society, especially in today's society where depression is a really prevalent issue due to the pandemic, happiness is in severe, severe shortage. Second, utilitarianism is very democratic in nature as well because everybody's needs are accounted for. And it is very simple and applicable to a business context. However, the disadvantage would be it focuses purely on the idea of happiness. Sometimes pleasure should not be the priority. It can inhibit progress. If we as a society do not push ourselves out of the comfort zone, how would we ever truly grow? And it also creates an unstable environment in this case because it would require for people to have consistent decision-making and making a different ideas throughout the span of their lives, which can make rules um, evolve very quickly. And it can also advocate for injustice and how can we truly, truly calculate the consequences of our actions. Now, I would like to summarize what we have learned so far. 
So act utilitarianism is we can make morally good decisions by working out how much general happiness a decision will produce for everybody concerned in relation to the principle of the greatest happiness. And act utilitarianism also looks at the consequences of each individual act and calculates um, utility each time the act is performed. So look at the utility and then act. Next, rule utilitarianism is that we should aim to follow the moral rules that establish the, the, through the principle of happiness, in this case, utility. And when there is no pre-established moral rule for a per particular case, we should aim to develop one that accounts for the ideas that I've explained previously. And so in this case, we also look at the consequences of everyone following a particular rule and calculates the overall utilitarianism of accepting and rejecting. So in this case, the process would be Look at the utility. Does it go in line with the rule? And then we act. And that brings us to the end of the presentation. And I look forward to asking you guys a bunch of questions. Thank you.